Are we ready? Another four seconds. So let's do that. Okay. Let's please put our hands together for Emily Cooksey. Water. We all use it. In fact, as a nation, we actually produce 11 billion litres of wastewater every single day. But how often do we stop to think what happens to that water after it's left our homes? I imagine for most of us, the answer to that question is never, or at least not very often. So what does happen? Well, it goes to a wastewater treatment plant. Here, it goes through a number of stages which makes it clean and safe to use again. Perfect. Well, not really, because those stages, even though they do clean our water, they take up large areas of land and can use a lot of energy, which is harmful to the environment. One stage in, partic in particular generates a large quantity of sludge, which is full of bacteria, which needs to be incinerated or chemically treated before we can release it to the environment again. We're becoming increasingly aware of how our behavior impacts the environment around us, and we're constantly finding new technologies for cleaner energy or encouraging recycling. So why should how we treat our water be any different? And that's where my research comes in. So I'm working on a microbial fuel cell. Now this system is made up of two compartments. And what we do is we take the wastewater, which contains some of that bacteria I mentioned before, and we put it into one side, which is called the anode. Inside is this massive piece of carbon, which is full of lots of tiny holes, which make perfect homes for that bacteria to grow and live in. So once the bacteria settle down, we're a little bit mean to them, and we completely starve them of oxygen. Now, us mere humans would die out at this point, but the bacteria are actually really clever, and they think, right, I need to find something else to survive on. So they turn to the water, and they break down the dirt into positively charged protons and negatively charged electrons. Now, the design of the cell means that the positively charged ions can pass straight through the middle through a proton exchange membrane to the cathode, whilst the, le the electrodes with their negativity just get pulled backwards. So they're forced to travel another way around the cell. So they go through a wire around the outside. Once they both get to the cathode, we've got our protons and our electrons, they rejoin and produce hydrogen. So we're nice again, and we give them oxygen. So your hydrogen and your oxygen gives you H2O, which is your clean water. But something even more amazing is that that movement of electrons actually generates a small amount of power. So not only are you cleaning water, you're also generating electricity. I'm not going to lie to you and say it's going to be powering your homes anytime soon, but the fact that it can produce power means it's a much better alternative to what we're currently using. We're becoming increasingly aware of how our behaviour impacts our environment around us. So now it's time for us to make sure our water is not only clean and safe, it's also clean sustainably for both us and for future generations. Thank you very much.